All right, hi everyone. Now, just a quick warning for those of you with a low attention span. I talk a lot, I talk a long time, and I say I'm an ah a lot, and I don't edit my videos because I just can't get around to it. I haven't got time. Um, these are for people who don't mind having a cup of coffee and just having the video running in the background, maybe while they do something else, have a listen to. Consider it a bit of a podcast or something like that. Okay, uh, this one's been a long, long time coming. Uh, people who've followed my channel know that I have a, a Lumia. This is about Lumia phones, right? I've got a Lumia 920, which is now three years old since I bought that. Uh, great phone, best phone I've had, one of the best in any case. And because I have just received my Lumia 950 in a box today, my 950 XL I should say, I promised myself I would finish this clip off before I opened it, yeah, before I opened the new phone. And the clip that matters is the in between the 920 and the 950s, of course, we had the 1020. And being into photography, that was the phone to get. And uh, if you've seen my channel, you may know that I purchased a 1020 first day it came out here. Uh, reboxed it, took it back. Got another one, took that out, did test. I mean, I tested these cameras extensively and uh, decided in the end that it just wasn't up to scratch. And so I returned the second one as well, and I've just kept the 920 ever since. Um, I remember going into the shop when I bought the 920. I bought it locally. I mean, I like to buy local because it costs a bit more, but at least you can take the thing back and show them what you don't like. And if it's a good shop, you know, a chain store, a big place, it was the local telecom, I think, um, you know, they'll usually take something back. And after the second one, we sort of decided, look, forget it. Um, I'll do something else. I'll sit it out and wait for the next thing. And so that's now, what, two years, two years ago, something like that. Crazy. Uh, and it's been two years I've been very disappointed with my camera phone and have not been taking a lot of photos with it because it's just garbage. And so the 1020. Now I did a very long video of this, about two hours long, way back then, and I just couldn't post it because people don't like long videos. And uh, it was just too long and too detailed and too much pixel peeping that I, I thought this is just going to be cause more drama than it's worth. And so I've been trying to keep it, make it short. And so today I decided I would just pull out good stuff and bad stuff from my folders. You know, I kept all my folders of the review stuff, all the stuff I did, you know, all the folders of images I took and took off other sites. And um, also a chap, nice chap I met, met here in town called Hong. Uh, he, he, let us he met I met up with him and we used his 808 he spotted me with the 1020 um, and came up and said hello and so we met up so I could do some photos with his camera as well alongside and uh, he's probably been waiting been waiting to see those for a couple of years now um, I've got one of those photos as well just to demonstrate uh, the actual final point that's that I want to make. So let's start off with why the camera is good in the 920. Uh, sorry, the 1020. Uh, well, just to sidetrack, the phone itself is basically exactly the same as the 920. So I was just buying the same phone with a 41 megapixel camera. You know, what could be better than that? And uh, now. The, so I was really was only testing the camera, and that's all I'm looking at here is the camera, not the phone, not the rest of it. The phone was slow, the camera was very slow, but you know, you plan your shots, I mean, it's a heck of a lot faster than the cameras I used to use, so, you know, what's four seconds? Big deal, it's not slow. Um, so that didn't worry me. And uh, so I'll quickly touch on why the camera is really, really good, and then I'll touch on why it wasn't good enough. And so if you don't like hearing bad stuff about your purchase, I mean, it's old now, I suppose, so most people probably don't care. But the likes on the video are for whether you appreciate the video and me going to this trouble or not, rather than whether or not you approve of the thing in the video. Um, so, uh, yeah, as I say, I'm going to say nice stuff and not nice stuff about the camera. Okay, the nice stuff, let's start with that, because the nice stuff is pretty obvious. Um, 
Now I'm shooting this at 1020 off my desktop using uh, Camtasia and well 1080p sorry 1080p off my desktop and I'm just going to use Picasa Photo Viewer so when I double click an image it's going to open in that. I'll zoom in and out and drag it around uh, if it's a bit painful to watch uh, I'm not sure I can help that but in any case here we go this is why the camera is good so say say there's a photo you take that photo you look at it that size you know that's a four say right there something like that um, great that's that looks like I mean any decent camera phone will take a photo like that um, but the nice thing is of course you can do this you can go bang and look at that look at all the stuff in there look at all the details I mean it's just amazing it's beautiful really good really good there's the wings you know the feet the hairs almost the almost the little hairs on the uh, on its little um little ankles and elbows and knees and whatever it has in its leg there but uh, all those bits so that's great isn't it? it looks fantastic and look I mean that's poster size um, at that at one to one which is what 100 dpi or so 90 dpi something like that that's poster size that's massive um, even at 300 dpi you know you're getting a really nice big big print and it would be you're not going to be looking at pixels that's for sure uh, but you are going to be looking at uh, camera and lens defects and image defects you're definitely going to be seeing those if you know what to look for and so that's why it's good that looks great very nice you know what's down here it's great you know if you want to separate that photo out there you go there's another photo what could be better than that uh, another example so say say you've got this there's your photo and these these aren't meant to be great photos I was just you know flower right and smack in the middle just taking some tests doing a lot of tests um, these are not meant to show sharpness a lot of bloggers point their point their cameras at a pot plant or a plant by the door to try and show you how good or bad it is that's not a test it doesn't really show you much um, what it will show you is just like a little bit of the wow factor um, so say there's your photo and then let's look at it one to one bang look at that look how big that is it's just amazing um, take it back down to say where it would be for 300 dpi be like that very nice be a nice shot that would be uh, very good so in real life if you're looking at this on your YouTube uh, let's see that right there would be about a foot high at 100% uh, you know 100 dpi or something and you still get you know four inches or so at a 300 dpi it's very nice so that's good that, that looks great and because of this type of photograph subject is in the middle it's in the um, plane of focus and everything else is not so you get this apparent sort of sharpness just from that uh, that's almost the kind of perfect subject for a camera like this and pulls it off very nicely great uh, this here what I'm shooting there is uh, a flat absolutely that was dead flat and I lined it up pretty careful to uh, take this uh, flat this is just rocks and crap on the beach and in here you know again it's like okay that looks great and then let's go in bang there we are look at all those little little tiny grains this is little grains of shell and glass and rock and all kinds of garbage here on the beach and you could scroll around this for um, a long time and not look at the same little grain twice so that's very cool very cool so just to bring that back just show you how just how much there is in there that much that's 100 percent and there we go back down pretty cool pretty nice so again a nice example and again the ideal type of shot is this sort of thing you know we have a central item that's in focus and the rest is not and uh, the out-of-focus highlights there the bouquet is actually quite nice 
you know, I mean, it's a full aperture lens. That's what camera phones are. So you don't really get anything else but circles, <laughs> which is ideal. Um, looks quite decent. And again, if we go in, that's only 50%. Uh, you know, let's go all the way into 100% and see what we're looking at. It's pretty cool. Look at that little little thread along there of some junk, little grains of sand in there, and that's taken at, I don't know, a foot and a half away or something like that. And pretty amazing. So, you know, you could crop that there, and crop it there, take just that piece out of it. I mean, it's not a photo worth cropping, but just to show you in what way this camera is really cool and it's really good. So that's sort of the obvious thing. It does a good job. It does a good job and that sort of thing. So that's good. Another reason. Those were all, you know, full whatever it is, 38 megapixel shots. I've got a guest bird in the background here is making a bit of racket, so just ignore that if you can. Okay. Um, the other thing about this camera, those were all 38 megapixel shots, you know, full full size, the high res ones. If the camera's nice, it would save the uh, down sampled 5 megapixel one plus the full size one. And the down sampled image here is pretty cool. Um, this here, I'll go to one to one. Actually, I might open these, I'll drop them into a browser like that. So there's one. That's the uh, that's my 920 there. We can see. This one is 1020 at uh, five megapixels, I think. Oops, sorry. Drop it onto another tab. And then the uh, next shot here is the full uh, 38 megapixel, whatever. See, it's 12 meg image. That's that one. We'll bring these in here. And I'll just do that because it lets us um, lets me drag them around so we're looking at the same sort of spot, same area. So, you know, if you're just looking at your image that size, like a 10.8 or an A4 print, well, there isn't a heck of a lot between them. The nice glossy print, obviously, these the full 38 megapixels is going to be the best. Uh, here on this screen, because it's obviously only a 100 dpi screen, the big image actually looks softer um, because this screen doesn't show it properly and the 5 megapixel looks best and the one off the 920 also looks really nice uh, but once we go in to 100% here we go now we're at 100% and we'll look at something like say see this state building there yeah there's a it says state.co.z on top of that I'll bring this in Go to the same place. Now these are not all the same, same resolution and so on. So they're they're going to show things at different um, distances. But that's all right. I'll zoom in on that a bit more. And here's the other one. So now what we've got is a Lumia 920. This is now viewed at 100%. And um, I'm just going to shoo this bird out of here. You go out of here, you. You're making a racket. Bye bye. Okay. Um, we're looking at this building here where you've got some text on the building. There's actually a website on the building. That's what you need is a, is a web link on a building so you can know where to click. And uh, on the 920, we can't quite see it. You know, and why would you expect to look at that? It's that small in the image. So, meh, doesn't look that great. Looks good there looks a bit meh at that sort of size but this image is 3500 pixels by 2000 so that's higher res than the next one which is the down sampled Lumia 1020 image so this one here is down sampled okay and I'm just gonna zoom in on that using the browser zoom because look, what we can see there, from there to there, I'll just go in a bit further. I'll bring this one in as well. It becomes quite obvious what's going on here. See, this is just not sharp enough. This one 
is fewer pixels, sharper image. Oh, everything there, the background, you can see the sharpening on the top of the buildings there and so on. I mean, everything looks better in this one. So that's the uh, result of downsampling from an image. This is now the 38 megapixel one. That looks like this. There we go. Looks like I've, I've actually zoomed these other ones in as if they were that big, pretty much. And so you can see that the 1020 can see that. It can read it pretty clearly too. And all those buildings show up. There's not a lot of sharpening. That's quite good about this camera. Things are quite flat and, you know, there's a bit of sharpening and hardly not much at all by default, so that's really good. And so when this is down sampled to even less than the resolution of the 920, you actually get a nice sharp image. A sharper image than you would get if it were shot at the uh, size here. And so that's cool. That's another reason why this is really good. Let's just scroll around there. Ah, oh, forget it. I'll just don't want to waste time doing that. So let's uh, carry on. I'll just uh, reset these back to uh, what they were. Control zero takes us back to 100%. Yeah, look, you can see that um, sharpening all the way along the hill top up there. And edge contrast enhancement, we'll call it. Okay, that's why the camera is good. It's great at 38 megapixels and it's better than your old camera at your old camera's megapixels. So, you know, there's no problem shooting 5 megapixel images with the uh, 1020. They're really good results. Okay, what else have we got going on? Um, these images here show the same sort of thing. These are just, uh, I always point out my window to this particular area. I will go into those a little bit later. But that is pretty much why the camera is good. That's all I want to say about why it's a good camera. And because I'm a habitual cynic and not necessarily happy with everything I buy, I still have a critical eye. I also have things why it's not so great. And let's have a look. So when they did the launch, they had the big launch of these in New York, and they flew in and they went out, they went around on a helicopter, and they, they put out these couple of, well, a series of photographs, including these ones from the chopper. And I immediately grabbed them and poured over them for a little while looking for the particular problem. And actually, I'll tell you what the problem is before I do it, because I actually said to the shop owner, um, to the girl in the shop, I said, look, my old camera does this, my old 920. If this new camera does exactly the same thing, I'll probably bring it back. So I actually warned her when I bought it, and sure enough, I brought it back. I'll show you what the old camera does, and I'll do that on these ones here. This is what the old camera does. So, here. Uh, this shot is from a couple of years ago, and so it's, this is something that's actually got much worse, even. Uh, but it was always there. I'd take a photo, and I'd think, okay, that's all right. It's pretty crappy over here on the left, all blurry and fuzzy. But right smack over in the middle of, well, just to the right of center up here in this area, I get this big fuzz spot. So the whole thing goes all fuzzy like that. And that's, can't get rid of it. Every photo has that big fuzzy spot. And uh, funnily enough, it got worse. And now you c the question is, well, what creates that fuzz spot? Is it the lens? I think not so likely, but perhaps more the CCD, the way the CCD is finished off, or whatever it is, the, the sensor, something on that, um, something in its mounting, some kind of resin, I don't know, but there's something there that's causing this to be bad. And I see this on web photos from other people all the time, this particular problem. In random places, just but always consistent, uh, just a big splotch, um, bad performance like that. It's not an optical issue in the sense that, you know, the lens is producing this kind of aberration. Um, 
yeah, I'm, I don't know what it is, but I don't think it's the lens itself. I think it's the uh, the way the something to do with the mounting or the finishing of the uh, sensor. I think is what's doing it. The corner crappiness here, you know, that's the uh, that's the lens. But funnily enough, these smartphones actually have a, tend to have really really flat um, flat image projection as the lenses produce a really really flat image which is great so they do tend to have excellent sharpness to the corners mostly um, often the manufacturers give you a particularly wide angle lens and go particularly close to the edge of this ECD and you can get quite crummy results this camera was okay the worst bit is this thing halfway out to the edge uh, that big splotch I'll show you how the camera performs today after multiple updates, you know, the my 920 runs the whatever the last ROM is, you know, it always got updates in time. I was updated. I'm not running Windows 10 on it. It's still running 8.1 and whatever the current update is. But about a year ago, the a uh, couple of big ROM updates back, all of a sudden I noticed the camera change and just get worse. I noticed indoor shots, you know, when you first get the camera, you do some indoor shots and it's like, wow, that's amazing. Well, look what it does indoors, you know, it's got a holds the shutter open for a long time, gives you uses the optical image stabilization to give you a quite a good image, quite a, an image you wouldn't have otherwise captured. And uh, that sort of stopped, I noticed. That doesn't do that anymore. And uh, what it did in its place was just give me out of focus shots all the damn time. And this is typical. So I'll just show you, this is absolutely typical. Um, I need to do this in a viewer. Let me try sizing it down and then I'll flip through it. So this is typical of my camera now. Okay. First off, the camera of course always has this fuzzy spot uh, which it has up here. So on the right side of all my photos, and even over here on the left, fuzz, but let's just flip through here. This is what happens. Nice photo, out of focus photo, out of focus photo, nice photo, out of focus photo, <laughs> nice photo, nice photo, nice, 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 out of focus, out of focus, out of focus, nice, <laughs> out of focus. <laughs> I mean, just rubbish. It does this constantly. It's not predictable. I'm slow on the shutter. I'm trying to stare at the screen, you know, between shots. I go, does that look in focus? Ah, I think it is. On to the next one. Hurry up. And then half the shots are just junk like this. So that is really irritating. I would have liked to have had, you know, that shot. Would have been nice to have a couple of these, but that one. <laughs> I got that one, not that one. Uh, so that is just one pain in the ass that it does that. Um, but the other issue that I was just referring to with the outer focus on the right, this is this is it. I mean, look at this. Look how terrible that is. Well, over here it's okay. This part on this side, I mean, it's okay as far as this camera is sharp. There, that's quite reasonable. You know, it's got depth of field enough to cover the between the bike and the background. But up here, this whole area now, big area, it's just useless just terrible. I mean, those are boats stacked up against there. Go on to the next image. So again, look at this nice thing. Look at this. This all looks fine over here. These trees behind the bike there. Little kid running around. Nothing wrong with that. Kid being pushed on a swing looks fine, but then look at this house. Uh-oh. Whoa, look at that tree. Unbelievable. I mean, it's just the biggest... <laughs> <Look at laughs> Look at that thing. How terrible is that? It actually improves out there, but just all this is just completely useless. Um, and then the whole thing goes like that. It's just hopeless anyway. So um, typically the shots I take are nice and sharp there, and then crap over here. Just utter crap. Look at the zip here in the seat awful, just unusable. So anyhow, that's the problem. That's the 920. I see this online with other people's photos all the time. 
Um, see people referring to it here and there, you know, talk about smearing, sort of painted look, and so on. Well, that's exactly what it is. Okay, that's why it's crap. And so if I move on to the new camera, when I was getting the 9, the 1020, and I said to the lady in the shop, I might bring this back if it does the same thing. They had launched, at, at the launch, as I was saying, they put out these images, these great big, um, beautiful shots of the of New York from a chopper. Nice, nice stuff. And I said about going, hmm, right, let's have a look at this. Let's see what's going on here. And I look at it and I go, okay, amazing here. I mean, wow, you know, just wow. Looks fantastic. What else could you want? So that's great. Um, and then as I come out towards here, I always start to think, well, you know, there's a degree of fall off towards the edges. We're going to have to be prepared for something. And it looks okay. And I noticed on these, I haven't got the third image that I wanted, but I noticed that this, the sample shots all had this fuzz along the bottom here. Just that, like a bar, like this. Now note that um, this isn't produced by the lens because the lens produces a circular image. It doesn't produce a rectangular one. So the sharpness of the lens continues all the way off. This is what happens. The sharpness of the circle here, it's sharp, say it's sharp there, and it's sharp two-thirds of the way out. Well, that circle extends. It makes a circular image. That circle extends of this sharpness here, extends all the way down here below the image, around and up, like that. Right, so the camera makers allow it to get crappy here because that's at the very edge of the performance of the lens. Um, but all across the top and on the bottom of the certainly of the long sides should be exactly as sharp as this area up here. Right, that's what's supposed. But I notice these cameras produce this fuzzy bar there fuzzy, just a straight line. See, the top of that building looks great. Looks looks brilliant. I mean, look how sharp. Look at the detail. It's amazing. Um, and then the bottom is just shot, completely buggered. And it does that all the way along in an even sort of stripe along the bottom. And the other shots did that as well. So that was weird. Um, but that fit with my idea that it's something to do with the CCD and the, or the sensor, sorry, well, I don't know if it's a CCD or whatever. The mounting or the finishing, maybe there's a resin on it, I don't know. Um, and I also noticed on these shots here, this thing, and it's not bad here, it's actually, this is obviously a great um, image, but um, in this car park here, we have cars that look good, look good, look good, but then just right here in this area, all of a sudden there's a whole stripe that looks really bad, and it extends into the building here on this street, so the cars there look good, but then here, they just fall to pieces, just look dreadful. And it's all along here. Everything looks terrible. And then down here, they actually look okay again, look quite good, up until this stripe, this strange bar. So that was, I noticed that when I first looked at these. Um, the rest of this one looked beautiful. I mean, looks great up here. Look at all that stuff you can see. Really cool. But then the other one, which was an even more impressive looking photo. I had a great shot. Um, so in here, again, we zoom in and it's like, wow, look at that. Fantastic. Looks really nice. I mean, this was very promising. It was looking great. Um, and then we'd get, say, over here. So this looks amazing. See all that? Amazing. Let me just go over here. And these cars there, you know, I'm zoomed way in, that's 100%. So those cars look great. I'm going to go on here a little bit, and then this, these cars look terrible. And look at these trees. And this area here is terrible. Look at this building. See how it's nice and clear, those windows there? And those ones that look great. And then you go down the building, and look at that, it just disintegrates. The image just falls to pieces. So there's a whole area along here, like that, that's just terrible just terrible. Um, it's so strange that over here you'll get really quite sharp areas on the very edge of the frame and then up here you get terribly unsharp areas and this roof is just a mess. But then up here 
it's relatively sharp again. Um, that street, that's terrible right there. But up here, all the way up in the corner of the frame, see, this is the corner of the frame. That's plenty sharp for me. That's plenty sharp. No problem at all with that. So it looks great up here. Really good. Really good. Um, but then in other areas, um, again, it'll, it'll look great here. See, these cars will look good. You'll go up the street, I think, and they look great there. And then all of a sudden, they just all fall to pieces. And this building looks terrible down here. But then those trucks look great. Terrible, great. Uh, they look perfectly reasonable for the edge up there. It really disintegrates up there. Um, and just this area here, these cars. So those taxis look fine. Those taxis and those trucks look fine. But in between there, again, it's part of this whole area like that that just looks a mess. Just terrible. And, uh, oh, here. Oh, that's where we just were. So this whole area down here. I mean, look at these diggers and these cars. They look great. But then up here, this is all just fallen to pieces, this building. Again, super sharp here. Yeah, pretty fun, some of these places. And so that was of concern to me. You know, um, the unevenness, just the unevenness of the results. And the thing is, it matched my experience with my 920 and what I'd seen on other versions of these cameras. Uh, so it matched that. Wasn't too happy about that. So the question is, would my 920 that I bought do that? And I've just shown you some photos over here of the 920, doing its stuff, strutting its stuff, doing, doing well. Perfectly nice. And then here. So this is a good representative image. Just a snapshot, standing on a rock here or on, a, on this hillside, I remember getting out. Nice sunny day, fast shutter speed. I mean, what are we looking at here? 1,000, one, one, one seventeen hundredth of a second. <laughs> you know, I'm not handshaking that, that's for sure. And the image is actually quite sharp. Here we go, see? Looks good, looks good. Look at these houses, all the way to the edge here. Look at that. Not at the very edge, not at the very edge, but over here from about that far in, about five to 10% inwards. Houses look good, houses look good. Look good, and then it's like, oh, hang on, what's going on here? Look at the vegetation up here, clear, and then mud. Here, just turns to mush all smeared and mushy. And look at these houses. Look at those houses. They're just a mess. It almost looks like a shine fluke uh, tilt, um, what do you call that tilt focus that people use as an effect to create a sort of a toy town effect. Um, tilt the uh, back of your camera. That's sort of the look. Almost makes this car look like a toy. <laughs> Quite neat. But look at the terrible state of the uh, vegetation there behind the houses. And yet up here, all of a sudden it's sharp again over here. And then up here, it's just a mess again. But up here, mm, it's OK. Over there, it's a mess. Over here, it's OK again. Quite nice and sharp up there. But down here, just dreadful. All the way along there, it's horrible. It's funny, you see, those rocks are a mess, but these ones here are fine. And out here, it's all quite nice, perfectly good, perfectly good. So there's a big drip across there somewhere. That's just a mess to there. Um, that's not the only spot. Down here, further down the beach, right, we have uh, this area with these flowers looking good, looking good. These rocks, nicely visible. Nicely visible. Then we move down here a bit, we can see the texture, and it's like, uh-oh. Just in here, this whole thing, a mess. But back, but up here again, it's sharp, see? So we have sharp, fuzzy, sharp. Here, really obvious. This is why I put, pulled this image out, because the rocks make it really clear. Sharp down here, looking good. Totally fuzzy. And nice and sharp again up here. Just to make that really clear, look at that. You can see the rocks. 
you can see the fuzz and you can see the rocks again right. and that happens there's this patch up here where it does it so again the beach looks good up there looks good down here but right there in that whole area it's a mess it's just a mess it looks nice over here and the water there is looks messy it's hard to see because it's water and uh, that is typical that's absolutely typical of what goes on with these cameras and of course I never saw this in any other reviews uh, yeah <laughs> I've read a lot of reviews and watched a lot of reviews and silly silly camera tests but this is this is the result this is obvious to me this is what's going on I can see even at this level here that that's all out of focus now someone might go well you're only going to print them this big you're only going to stick them on your Instagram and stuff them up and make them that big and it won't matter yeah it's true but you know you don't need a 38 megapixel camera for that either and the question then okay let's move on is how sharp and this is the whole the question of this video right now how sharp should it be just how sharp should this be? What's the standard? How do we judge? Are we pixel peeping? Am I pixel peeping and setting too high a standard? And um, you know, we have to. That's what I have to decide. And using my experience as a photographer and a photographic technician, um, I can look at these images and go, well, what's what is the how is the lens performing? How is the camera itself performing? And with these cameras, with these these cell phone cameras, with the uh, optical image stabilization, they're a bit different from a uh, from a big professional camera or a stills tra tra traditional stills camera because they have other things affecting the image. You get image processing affecting the image. The stabilization affects the image, um, and of course the lens itself. I mean, these lenses are super super tiny. Uh, they're mostly made of plastic or optical plastic. Sometimes they have a glass element. I think the uh, camera did have a glass element in it too, which is nice to have, <laughs> but not essential. Um, so the question is, how sharp should it be? And the answer is given by the camera itself. If the camera is, and I'll pull out this image here, if the camera produces, if the camera and lens and sensor combination produces this thing here, this quality there, right? If it produces that quality there, and there, and there, that's how good it is. If all things are working fine, if the lens is focused, if it's within its acceptable, you know, area of flatness, and if the CCD is in good order, and the autofocus has focused it, and if the stabilization isn't wobbling around ruining it and the photographer isn't shaking things that's how good it is that's how good it should be everywhere across the image where it is in focus and where um, aberrations introduced by the lens design are not introduced and with a camera like this you would expect that to be the case for and I'm going to draw a circle on this around about there around down the bottom sorry and then up around here again I would expect this image to be flawless well to be exactly like this exactly like the good bits all the way out to there flat all the way along the whole image when it when things are at infinity you know this is considered to be at infinity what 50 times the focal length range that's infinity for a lens that's how good it has to be so that's the answer it has to be that good everywhere where the lens should allow it now funnily enough these lenses are actually really quite good as I said they have a very flat um, plane of field and so they actually perform well and I looked at a lot of 10, 10 20 images and they perform well all the way out to here just that last little bit in the corner they perform well and you can scroll you can zoom in and you can see very good performance 
out here, right there. You see, look, excellent performance, way out here, way out from the center. There, look how far away we are. Excellent performance out there. Well, there's the answer. That's how good it should be. So if all things are put together properly and the image is taken properly, that's how good it should be. And it simply is not. That was the problem. It just isn't. I just found it too disappointing for my my eyes. <laughs> too disappointing uh, to put up with those big fuzzy areas. And in my tests, I was getting two problems. One was the fuzzy areas. And the other one was that the sides of the image, left and right, at about, you know, 90% of the way out, or 80 to 90% of the way out from the center, left and right, the image degraded quite badly. And worse than this camera. So this camera here that they used for this demo had better, much better performance way out on the edges. The one I had did not. Now I'll show you an image of mine. Actually, let's just open these couple. I'll put them in a browser. I'm up to 41 minutes. I have to say, this is still a lot quicker than the video I made. And I think I'm probably being a lot clearer because I'm just focusing on these particular issues. So this is the... Uh, I think this was the... Um, okay, 5 can't remember. But what I was getting, let me just look at this one. Yeah, so what I was getting with these, um, let me put that back in there. Yeah, what I was getting was a quite good quality image here in the middle. Uh, one of the 1020s had a very fuzzy bit here just in that area, quite fuzzy, even though over here on this brickwork looked great. Nice and sharp over here, but quite fuzzy. Ah, come on, zoom. Ugh. Quite fuzzy down around this area. But I wouldn't, that wasn't enough. That wasn't enough of a problem, but it was just something quite noticeable for me there in, the, in all of the photos. Um, whereas the other 1020 didn't do that. Gave quite a good result there because it was a different camera. So <laughs> these kinds of manufacturing variations are producing these problems. Now over here on the left, this is the kind of thing I was seeing. Quite good-ish to the other side of the chimney, but then not so good. Wasn't very happy with that. And overall, in all the images I shot, I sort of decided that the camera was performing up until just about there and over here just about there. I was really losing about 10% of the width uh, due to this crappiness and I found I would have to crop every single image down to that to get you know good sharpness across the um, image. Now of course it you know once again it doesn't matter for a shot like that it's completely irrelevant has no bearing on a shot like that. But uh, on other shots, you know, that I'm taking, yes, it does. Um, foliage, you know, trees and stuff just turn to crap. 10%, 90% of the way out, they just turn to garbage. And so that, that was a problem with these cameras. The Both of the 1020s I had, that was one problem. I was getting the smearing, and I was getting bad performance left and right. Quite bad. And I'll show you uh, an example of that. So here, and this is the nearly, nearly at the end. I haven't got much more to go. Uh, and okay, what I've got here is a couple of photos. Now this here is the. 1020. This was my, I can't remember if it was the first or the second. I think it was the second. This is the one I finally took back in the end. That's right. I remember showing, I showed the girl in the shop on the phone screen this photo. 
and I showed her this bench and I said that's why right there and she saw it straight away she said oh that's that's all smeary or all out of focus she said and uh, just to show you that so this is now zoomed in that's a hundred percent looks fine perfectly good very nice because you're not going to have it that big but as we get out here all of a sudden this happens see look at that it really turns to garbage and it turns to garbage really from about here even from there but just becomes unusable out there see how terrible that is see how awful <laughs> so the whole right hand edge all the way down there I'm drawing a line so here's the bench so halfway through that bench say that whole right hand line is really really bad it's terrible that's how bad it is that's totally unacceptable as far as I'm concerned and I know that because that's not unacceptable but even then I'm still I was looking at these going well how fussy are we how fussy should I be you know uh, well let's look at the other side look at that see same thing image is quite nice here this is a, this is all I'd expect that's all I'm after that performance and then right there part way through the bench just <laughs> turns to garbage all the way down just turns to garbage quite quite evenly see the trees there I mean it's just dreadful and so over there perfectly nice very nice uh, good tones in this very nicely done I thought there's good performance um, but that's the problem. I was facing losing 10% off that side, 10% off that side. And I just know after spending a year with my 920 and having that big splotch in the middle that this would have driven me bananas. And so I wasn't prepared to spend the very high price it was uh, for that. I didn't consider that an upgrade. Getting extra pixels here, that was the only, only benefit. And it wasn't worth it to me. Uh, of interest to uh, my friend Hung, who came along and with his 808 Nokia, which, uh, if some of them, I guess most of you will know, was the original camera with the uh, 41 megapixel sensor that created these 38 megapixel images a couple of years before the 1020. Well, that was the sensor they used for this, or a revised version. I think the 1020s one was actually smaller. Um, but uh, that was the original high-res phone camera. Now, I have a photo from that right here. Now, straight off, you can see the 1020 produces a much warmer image. It's more appealing. Uh, of course, you could adjust this to be like that. You know, you could adjust, make adjustments to do that. Uh, up here, look at that. See, I'll switch between them. Of interest is that the... Uh, 1020, apart from the color, which looks better anyway, just more appealing, whether it's more accurate or not, I think it is, but uh, it's more appealing, that's what matters. Um, the 1020 actually gives a nicer, slightly sharper result here around these the gables here and so on. A little bit of extra sharpening on it, and so the trees around there look less fuzzy. Um, so that I think where the 1020 performs properly it actually looks better than the um, than the older Nokia. So again score yay looks great but if you want to see just how sharp this 1020 should have been now look at this bench I'll show you how sharp it should have been. And this answers the question, how sharp should the 1020 camera be? And this is the final straw. That's how sharp it should be. Dramatically sharper. Look at these bushes here. Look at that. Well, <laughs> I mean, there's just no 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 debate about it. Look at how awful this is. And look at how very nice that is. See, this is a flat field. All the way from there to there. All the way 
to the edge, to the very corner. Look at the grass here, all the way to the very corner. See that? I mean, this is garbage. Just garbage. See the trees? Let's scroll up. You can see the trees all the way up to the corner there. Look at that. <laughs> Forget it. So, nicer color in the 1020, nice and green, but <laughs> let's go to the other side. This will be the last thing I do. So, again, here we are. There's the, uh, the old Met Center, Met Office. This is just fuzz. It's just fuzz. That, look, you've got the trees visible all the way up to the very edge of the frame. Look at that. Oh, I guess you can sort of see the branches. But there you go. It's just so much better. And if we come down here to see the bench, well, there's just no comparison. Well, the comparison is, this is the comparison. That's shit, and that's not. That bench looks good. That looks good all the way across the bench to the very edge of the frame. And you see the people sitting here? Great. Look, that's how sharp it's supposed to be. This one, once more, fuzzy garbage. So that was the final straw. Looking at these images, I decided I just couldn't handle it. So um, I sadly had to give that camera back. and. Uh, shop was very kind and uh, accepted that I was being a fuss pot and <laughs> not um, being not being dissatisfied with you know what was being billed as the best camera ever on a smartphone well in my view it just simply wasn't and so I went away and have been using the 920 ever since I thought I'll wait for the next thing we'll see what they do next um, the fact that the phone itself was no upgrade if I didn't have the 920, I would have bought this. Yeah, I would have bought this. But because I had the 920, the exact same phone, and the camera was okay, except for that splotch in it, um, was reason enough for me to not upgrade. Now, I have one last thing. This was the last thing I also found in my tests, and I, again, I never read this in any reviews, because the poke and prod people, you know, don't really look for the right thing. Uh, the camera has manual focus, right? That was when the new Nokia camera app came out. That was very cool. Gave us some adjustment options. Uh, in particular, the one that I've been wishing for desperately was uh, right under my thumb, exposure compensation. So that was fantastic. Um, I was disappointed. The one thing I'm disappointed about with all cameras is the white balance. The It's not smooth adjustment and that they it's just like you know you get five options and you're always very often wanting to warm up what the um, what the camera automatically decides to do the cameras are often a bit too neutral and you very often want to warm things up so that this image here from this uh, 80 what is it the what is it called the Nokia 808 case in point you see cold neutral in the old days on film cameras that would have been probably seen to be an accurate accurate representation of the uh, scene. These days people like things to look like this, Instagrammy and all bright and colorful. And look at all that amazing green. If you actually go there, it actually looks like that. Um, but so it's nice to have, you know, it'd be nice to be able to warm up your images just on the with your thumb a little bit. But I find that the two options for warming, which is the cloudy day and the, the I think it's the um, fluorescent light setting are just terrible. They're just way too yellow. They're just wrong. So it'd be really nice if there was, if there was a warm-up um, control under the right. You know, I just want the exposure compensation and warm-up. That's me. That would do every photo right there. Uh, so uh, amongst those settings is the focus, the manual focus. The manual focus is very useful. Um, in the old days, especially with when cameras used things like what is it, infrared and triangulation and so on to focus, do autofocus, you couldn't do it through a window. That was a problem. And so you'd have this setting, which was an infinity lock, to let you focus on a scene outside the window and not have it focus on the glass. 
Um, a similar thing that does affect modern cameras is when you're trying to take a photo and there's someone standing around in front of the camera. Say at a concert you have a f people you know, standing around in the frame over here but you're trying to video the person on stage or take a photo but the camera because the camera is using contrast to focus uh, you know looks at the CCD it uses that for focus it doesn't use anything else and it judges the focus based on turning something snappy usually what's closest and uh, or nearest and sometimes it thinks the person standing just off center is what you're trying to get because you know a good photographer would normally place the subject slightly off center and so a good autofocus system might consider the slightly off center person to be the subject and focus on that person and uh, so you end up having the stage out of focus, but the person's head is in focus. Things like that happen. So the, inf the manual focus is good for that. And the infinity lock in particular is useful if you want to stop it from focusing on the clown next to you, you know, in front of you at the gig or elsewhere at a wedding or something. If you focus it whenever you're shooting through a crowd or through trees or something like that where you want the thing in the rear to be in focus. Um, so the manual focus is good for that. Now the manual focus does this. If you I'll drop it in the um, drop it in here, drop it in the browser. So there's there's one. Switch to the other tab. And I just switched to the other tab. Alright, there we go. There's the other. So uh I can't remember which is which, but we will see. Maybe this will tell me. No, it doesn't say. I was looking at the uh, metadata here on the right. Um, say this example here. The camera might focus on this bar up here, or these power lines. They're a bit far away, but the point I was this was just taken outside the shop, so I did a quick test outside the shop. Um, if I if you wanted the building in the back there to be in focus whilst this foreground was still there, say you were shooting through a messy crowd or something, you wanted the background to be in focus, you'd use infinity. If you set the Lumia 1020 to infinity and you wanted that to be in focus, this is what you'd get. That. If you, man if you used the autofocus to let it focus and you used your little spot where you could tap on the screen to make it focus on infinity there, you got a sharp image. Now if you left it to the camera's manual infinity setting on the camera, which you can do if any of you have a camera like this, you get that. And the issue is the focus, the infinity focus, see, which should have locked all of that in to be in focus, is not infinity. that's the problem. <laughs> so if you do it yourself, if you leave the camera to do it and it can focus on infinity, you'll get it sharp. But if you use the actual manual of focus infinity setting, it's not sharp. I did another shot down the road, um, which was this one here. I don't have a comparison. All I did was I stood here like this. I put the camera on infinity so that background there should be in focus and it's not this is the garbage focusing system on the uh, Lumia 1020 it doesn't work they're all like this it doesn't work in fact the focus is way down here somewhere this is with the camera set to infinity manually this is where the focus is there's no option to make it focus further away either this was it this was the setting um, so that was very disappointing. Come on, zoom in. There we go, zoom out. And of course there we can see that dreadful performance of the camera on the side there. You can actually see it fuzzing out. That's what it just <laughs> does. It's even worse than being out of focus. Um, there we go. I think that covers it. That's really what I wanted to say. And that's an hour at 1080p. I'll try and get this uploaded. I'm not going to edit anything. And then I will s consider that to be done. I hope anyone who bothered sitting through this found it interesting. I hope I didn't put any of you off your 
phones, your 1020s, which was otherwise still a great camera and probably took many, many great photos. It just wasn't for me. And uh, I am now looking forward to, I'm, or, I'm, or I'm making the mistake yet again, <laughs> whatever it is, I've just bought the 950 XL uh, Microsoft Lumia, um, just to replace my three-year-old 920. And uh, I will do a, I don't know if I'll do an unboxing, but I'll have a, I might give you a, do like that kind of first impressions unboxing, because that's always fun to do and see if I post that. But then I'll actually go and do some tests with it. I'll probably do something extensive about the OS with Windows 10, which I really, really hate. And, um, but I'll try and be positive about. <laughs> and of course, I'll be looking at the camera um, with great interest because I want, I'm desperately wanting a good, sharp, useful, usable camera again. So I can go out and take some photos. So we'll leave it at that. If you like this, um, give me a like and uh, subscribe and all that. And I'll catch you again very soon, hopefully in the next few days once I've had a look at the new one. Alrighty. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.